Thank you so much for coming to this side event. I know it's uh, the very last day of the meeting, but I can uh, I appreciate uh, the countries that are here, Nigeria, Senegal, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Kenya, and many other countries that are here. So thank you so much for, for this. Um, the UNFCCC, the Regional Collaboration Centers, Eastern and Southern, Af Eastern and Southern Af Africa, Western, uh, Western Africa and Central Africa, and also MENA and South Asia. We did a um, collaboration work with uh, Agnes uh, to understand the um, LTLEDs landscape in, uh, in Africa. And uh, this is the work which uh, we are uh, presenting today. And um, to just kickstart the discussion, um, Andrea, our global lead, for the RCC is, is going to take us in. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I heard that the plenary start 2 p.m., so let me be brief and just quickly deliver in my opening remarks. I'm delighted today to acknowledge the collaboration between the regional collaboration centers we have in Africa, in Lome for West and uh, Central Africa, in Kampala for Eastern and Southern Africa, and in Dubai for MENA and South Asia. But together with Agnes, uh, develop, uh, prepare this comprehensive study on the state of uh, LTLEDs in Africa. It's a collaboration we value a lot. I also would like to take this occasion to Thanks for the continued support we also receive in the collaboration with the NDC partnership. I see Mariana here, and I would like to express my gratitude, not only for the support in Africa, but also globally with our regional collaboration centers. The primary objective of our partnership was to develop a robust guidance document for LTLEDs in Africa, recognizing the countries, that the countries face unique challenges and opportunities in achieving sustainable development and combating climate change. The LTLEDs landscape study in Africa provides valuable insight into the current status of LTLEDs in the region and identified area for improvement. This study will serve as a foundation for informed decision making and policy development. The LTLEDs represents an opportunity for countries to set a long-term visions and target that defines a roadmap for the deep economy-wide transformation needed to achieve low emission and climate resilient development. By aligning the LTLEDs with a national determined contribution, countries can ensure that steps are taken towards achieving their long-term goals. And let me add that that would also facilitate and attract, in my opinion, investment into the implementation of both LTLEDs and NDCs. We firmly believe that LTLED's landscape report and the accompanying guidance will provide the necessary entry points for both countries and supporting partners to take effective climate action. It will serve as a valuable resource for policymakers, practitioners, and stakeholders involved in climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts in Africa. With the completion of this work, we are confident that concrete next steps and action will be undertaken guided by the valuable insight gained from the study and guidance development process. This collaborative effort set the stage for enhanced capacity building, knowledge sharing, and targeted intervention to accelerate the implementation of LTLEDs in Africa. The LTLED landscape study and guidance for Africa will contribute to the global efforts in addressing climate change and achieving sustainable development goals. It is a testament to the commitment and dedication of all the partners involved in this important endeavor. And I reiterate once more the commitment of the Regional Collaboration Center of the Climate Change Secretary to continue supporting countries in the region with the development of the NDC, with the development of their LTLEDs. We are looking at the next cycle of the NDC, so we are there supporting implementation of NDC 1.0 and the update and enhance ambition in the next round of NDC 2.0. And with that, thank you again for your participation. Looking forward to interesting discussion today. Bye.
Thank you so much for the remarks. We just want to put um, the presentation by George on the on the on the platform so that he can make a presentation. All right. Thanks. Let me just. Hi, colleagues. I know it has been many days. Now, it's a pleasure for us to uh, present this study, which arose as a result of discussions uh, with countries, but more importantly with the, with the RCCs. And the intention primarily was to understand why many African countries have not submitted their long-term strategies. So that once we understand the reasons or the challenges thereof, then it becomes easier to work with them in trying to solve them. And secondly, we wanted to learn from those countries that have already done their long-term strategies what worked, what did not work well, and what could work well in the different settings. And, and particularly, as you know, Africa, the five sub-regions for us present some very unique characteristics, and therefore it's always good for the countries within those sub-regions to learn uh, from each other. And that, and that was the, the basis. And then finally, the intention was to try and come up with kind of a guidance as to Given all those challenges, for example, data, technical capacity, and all those, how do we, uh, what would be the best way to structure uh, th that kind of uh, LTS study? And as you know, uh, it is already embedded in the policy instruments. It's already embedded in Paris Agreement. It's already embedded in the decisions that uh, we, we have made. And there's even more emphasis that was put from Glasgow of aligning the NDCs with the long-term strategies. And that has been reiterated in many of the decisions. And that means, therefore, uh, as Andrea has indicated, 2025 is going to be very critical. For those countries that already have uh, long-term strategies, you'll be looking at how that long-term strategy can inform uh, the, 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 the second generation NDC or what may need to be changed and for those that uh, do not have the long term strategy it may be necessary uh, to do a long term strategy and then you, you do uh, N, uh, NDC so that uh, the NDC becomes a milestone uh, through which you are able to achieve uh, the long term strategy but I think the key message I want to emphasize in this case is that it must be a living document. Don't, don't say because you finished, you have closed it. Uh, because things evolve, and as you implement, you realize that you may need to uh, uh, shift, uh, especially as we are moving towards this low emission, climate resilient uh, pathways, then it becomes uh, a problem. So quickly, I just want to take a few minutes because I know we, we are supposed to be, ne next slide. Oh, I do have a pointer. Okay. So, primarily, this is the, it, it is, we have decisions and, and, the, and the instruments that underpin this, so it's not something that uh, is not, is not, doesn't exist. Uh, and then, we're looking at, at national level, it's very important because it helps to shift uh, the, 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 the planning into that space of climate change and development being put together. And, and I think that is a very critical area given that uh, uh, climate change undermines our, our development planning. At international level, of course, it can catalyze uh, these other means of implementation that uh, we do require. We so far on the website, very few countries but I also know that there are other countries that have finished, but they have not uploaded it. For example, Kenya, Uganda, and, and many others. So the, the numbers may be higher, 
but those that have uploaded, officially submitted, uh, they are uh, very few. And out of this, you will realize that there are very exciting experiences and lessons learned from that process. So as, as it was indicated, we just wanted to understand what, are, what is the state of affair, what are the challenges, and what are the opportunities that uh, we can use in that. These are the more detailed, uh, specific objectives in that, in that part. We'll share this so you'll be able to have it. The methodology, of course, we had the inception, we had data collection, we had data analysis, and of course, the, the reporting processes. And, and of course, we, we did have in-depth desk review, we did have survey, and some of you did respond uh, to the survey, and we did also have some uh, interviews in that regard. Uh, this is the uh, overall uh, responses that uh, we got. The numbers not very encouraging, and that also tells us that Africa, we are very, we keep on uh, blaming, uh, but sometimes we're not forthright to come out and say what is the problem so that we are able to act together. Now, in terms of uh, the challenges, uh, you, you would see that uh, many, many, many of them are indicating the, the whole thing is uh, either underway or they haven't started, which means there's a lot of opportunity in Africa uh, to make sure that we are able to, uh, to achieve that. The, what are the factors that are motivating this? You can already see it's because of international commitment, the Paris Agreement and others, but also having a long-term planning is, is as one area that is just important uh, as a country uh, to be able to move that. But others is about reconciling the vision uh, and also the, the impacts that, uh, that are being experienced in our countries. Of course, there are many challenges, but the most critical ones always, you'll always see the last one here, you can see access to data and also uh, the how do we how do you, how do you look at how you're going to reach the neutrality or net zero by 2050 and then of course we have a lack of access to finance uh, because uh, originally uh, the LTS were not mandatory as as if you read article 4 paragraph 19 uh, they were not mandatory but now as decisions uh, came about, and particularly from, uh, from Glasgow, then aligning the NDC with the LTS, then it meant that now uh, it has to be taken seriously. And that's why I think the NDC uh, partnership uh, will now need to also uh, redirect resources, not just on NDC development, but also on LTS, because then you have a long-term uh, view of, of that. But there are quite a number of neighbors. The other critical one is the lack of technical capacity. And I think one of the key things that uh, we try to do is we need to build national capacities, because at the end of the day, those are the ones who are going to uh, advise the government or also parliament, uh, because in, in many instances, parliaments are getting interested to know what is happening. And if we only have consultants doing the work and they fly out, then you'll have now nobody to be able to explain uh, locally. And therefore, uh, the, the building the technical capacity and using uh, national experts uh, becomes uh, very, very important. So this is a categorization of challenges based on the, on the sub-regions. Uh, you can see in some regions, access to data is, uh, is not uh, the, prior, the, the key issue. It's about technical capacity, and, and in some others is the lack of sector data uh, to define uh, the, the, the different sectors. The same to West Africa, you can see lack of access to finance as the, the main priority as compared to uh, Southern Africa. And the, what are the factors? They more or less measure, mirror to the challenges, and, and therefore uh, this is possible to address. Uh, the same to Central Africa, but you can see that Central Africa stands out to have more challenges than as compared to uh, the Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, and West Africa. And, and, and therefore, it, they may be need to have directed, direct interventions 
uh, to strengthen uh, Central Africa. As you can see there, what are the opportunities? I think by elaboration of, uh, of uh, LTS helps us to clarify clearly where we want to go and how we are going to get there. So very clear roadmap and, the, and anchor the NDC. Uh, and I think that, that, uh, that is important. But also we know that there are many other uh, partners that are providing support uh, to development of this type of uh, uh, policy instruments. And, and uh, I'm happy to see the NDC partnership here. And, and of course, linking NDCs and LTLEDs, which has now become a, 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 stand, a standing paragraph in all our decisions. Uh, and, and therefore, we need to, to be aware of that. But more importantly is the temperature goal. Because if we have set ourselves well below 2 degree, uh, moving towards uh, 1.5, then you'll want to know how you will play out under 1.5 regime. And, and that becomes important for national uh, development. Then, of course, we have had, um, we, have, we have analyzed the, the countries, and we want to tell you that, uh, and I'm happy to see some of the countries represented here, like Zim, Nigeria, you will see that they, they are some outstanding best practice, based on what uh, the, the process they went through. For example, if you look at uh, political endorsement, that political will, Ethiopia and Gambia had very clear framework in that respect. Neutrality target and alignment with NDCs and, and, and LTLEDs, unfortunately, that one hasn't, we haven't, we haven't gotten it. And that means there's an, an opportunity there. Investment needs, assessment and financing, you can see the Gambia, Ethiopia, and Zimbabwe had a very elaborate process that clarifies that. Stakeholder participation, very elaborate in Ethiopia. The visioning, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, and Ethiopia, very, very, very important. Economic modeling and LTLED measures, uh, Ethiopia and Zimbabwe stand out, and on the clarity of the roadmap, Zimbabwe uh, stood out. So you can see that in each of these countries that have already done something, we can learn something. And so those countries that want to do this process can actually engage these countries and they will be able to learn more from them. Of course, there are many lessons that we've learned and, and the core important thing is that uh, ATLED requires multi-sector approach. It cannot be done by Ministry of Environment alone. You will need the other sectors, and especially the planning and the finance. Because if you don't get them, then your priorities will not be part of that development planning, and, and therefore they will, they will drop out. And, and I think that is important. But also a key lesson learning is the engagement of all citizens. LTS requires that you actually have to engage with all stakeholders, uh, the vulnerable groups, uh, the youth and, and all that uh, group. But the economic modeling and, uh, and all the other modeling becomes important because you don't want to draw conclusions without evidence. And, and therefore, the evidence becomes uh, uh, critical in that respect. So we do have some ideas on, uh, on this. We, we are just finalizing this and, and we'll have a very clear document uh, uh, that uh, how do you uh, set up the initiation team, how do you define the objectives, uh, and, and this will also be informed by the best practices that uh, we have just talked about from the different countries. So with that, I want to end here because I know we are under pressure of time, uh, and, and we look forward to uh, sharing this document and engaging and using it to support uh, the, the rest of the continent that uh, we need to push so that by 2025, we should try to have as many of them having LT leads uh, as they do their uh, second generation indices. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. George, for the presentation. Yeah, now we want to just have some quick reflections from countries 
maybe I can call upon the, the countries. I can see Zimbabwe ticking a lot of boxes and we are privileged to have the focal point for Zimbabwe. Uh, Washington, Jakarta, you can maybe come. Yes, I think, I think it's better so that you can face the people. I can see Choma also from Nigeria. Yeah, we meet in a lot of um, actions on climate change and they've been doing some fantastic work around the AOT leads. So we want to have an understanding of what they are doing. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I know you're always ready. Thank you. Balis, I want yeah, you can also join the, the team. We just want to hear some reflection on the, on the same. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, our colleague from Senegal wants to have a reflection from, from the floor. Yeah. Alami? Okay. Thank you so much for, for this. And right, maybe to start with uh, Washington from Zimbabwe. I know you were among us the, the first movers in terms of development of the LT leads. And when we're doing our analysis, we were seeing that countries definitely struggle around the issues of economic modeling and also investments, and when we're doing the analysis, we're seeing that for Zimbabwe, it is sort of a clear investment framework. And possibly, you may want to share experiences. Uh, what is it that you may want to share to the, to the colleagues? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Mashungu, and it's a pleasure that uh, uh, before being absorbed into the United Nations, uh, Lawrence uh, was working also in the department that I lead, and he was leading development of uh, the LEDs. But what is critical is that uh, our vision 2030 of uh, the country itself, uh, it clearly stipulates Zimbabwe being a green economy by 2030. So we start from there. So the opportunities uh, which we took perhaps on board, uh, they were guided by the fact that the country had already a vision towards being green. Uh, that's why our LEDs was adopted and endorsed by the cabinet of ministers in Zimbabwe, showing commitment to implement uh, the low emission development strategies. Uh, and uh, right now we're at a stage whereby we are consolidating our investment plan uh, for the LEDs themselves so that uh, uh, we identify the opportunities and see the areas which industry can take on board. And also this would motivate the industry when they see uh, the opportunities uh, that are embedded within the actions which they can take towards greening the economy. Um, we robbed in the youths also uh, to, to be part and parcel of uh, implementation of the LEDs uh, because normally the youths are left behind, but in the country we have robbed the youths in seriously not only for just uh, capacitation and uh, awareness, but also eventually for implementation. There are so many areas which the, um, the youth can uh, play a role. Was we identified over 30 areas uh, which we can implement, uh, which can assist in the process of implementation of the REDS, including the green jobs which the youth can be um, involved in. So, I think for the time being, I can just leave it there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for that. Yes, uh, coming to you, Choma, yeah, from Nigeria. I know you communicated the long-term vision to the, on, the, on the UNFCCC website. Uh, we might want to also hear maybe your experiences, your take also on the study, 
what is it that possibly you may recommend any learnings obviously going forward remember countries are also going towards the revision of their ndc's yeah Okay, thank you very much, Lawrence, for the opportunity to share Nigeria's experience. Um, basically, we are very ambitious. And uh, when we submitted the first NDC, uh, the updated NDC in 2021, we also alongside developed the long-term vision for Nigeria. So we submitted both documents in, before Glasgow at COP26. What we did with the, with the support of the 2050 pathway, while we're revising Nigeria's NDC, we developed the vision alongside. What we did was that the vision was like a press setter. It was like the foundation of the direction Nigeria wants to take. Mm -hmm. And that was why the vision was developed. It was like pre-informing the government on the direction of what we are intending to do. And it is bridging the gap of what the NDC couldn't cover. Being that the NDC is short-termed, we looked at the vision to be long-termed. And again, what Nigeria did that was so beautiful was that we mirrored the sectors of the NDC. So the vision was not sufficient. When I looked at the best practices, I know you used the vision for that. Nigeria has advanced the uh, vision because we have developed the long-term low emission development strategy document. And it was launched at this COP28 on the 1st of December by Mr. President. We are yet to deposit it to UNHCRC. But the vision was foundational. And the long-term uh, uh, long low emission development strategy that we have developed now is aligned with the NDC sectors. Where the NDC stopped, the, the, the long-term started. So it's 2060 for Nigeria. We focused on seven sectors, just like the NDC. We expanded the scenarios. We did the business as usual scenarios. We did the, uh, the normal um, policy mapping scenarios. We did the natural gas scenarios. And we became so ambitious and did the renewable energy scenarios. Those four scenarios informed the LTS led. Secondly, what we did was so beautiful is that before we started engagement of the ex local experts and also with the supervision of international experts developed in Nigeria's long-term vision, we did the mapping of existing policy documents from the seven sectors. We need to know where all the sectors' ambitions are lied and we're lying it with the strategies of mitigation and adaptation for the LTS-led so that at the end of the day, there will be regional and also uh, 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 subnational and federal ownership. We educated the parliamentarians by bringing them for validation of the vision that we had and the key into it from the beginning. So we also did stakeholder mapping, relevant stakeholders that will own the implementation, will build their capacities alongside development of the LTS laid. So now we have a whole societal uh, acceptable document. And before announcing it to COP28, we validated it nationally and also made sure that the subnational was represented because formulation of policy that is not implementable is the bottleneck of a disaster. So we invited the subnational government, the parliamentarians, the academicians, the CSOs, private sector parliamentarians, and also the divisional heads of all the departments and agencies, MDAs. We had quite a number of individuals who joined us so virtually, and they showed, socialized this document with them, and gave them a, the raw document, and gave them a timeline. Make your substantive inputs because at the end of this validation exercise and integration of this your inputs is going to be a nationally binding document to form actions. And that was done before we brought it to COP28. Another thing we did that we looked at the vision of the present administration and aligned every sectoral mitigation of, uh, of, of objectives or the outcomes with the vision. So this vision is speaking with the government vision, so which makes the government more excited and also push them for action. What we intend to do now is this. 
we have a, a very robust document that has been owned by the nation. What we are doing now is doing the, we are presently doing the costing of the NDC implementation framework. And we don't want to do that in silos. The NDC implementation framework costing will inform the LTS investment plan so that it will be one in one. With the support we received from the uh, national, the EU, which is uh, through the Nigeria Climate Change Response Program, we have developed institutional MRV system and we're linking the two. As we're monitoring progress of the NDCs, it's also monitoring progress of the, uh, the, uh, the LTS lead. So we have a robust system in the MRV system that is not only sectoral, but also subsectoral. And we know who are custodians of those data, and those data even informed the development of the LTS lead. There are a lot of number of exciting stories that we have done in the Nigeria NDC. Time will not permit me, so I will give the floor to Lawrence. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Country ownership. Yeah. So you can see as we move, uh, there's a lot of definitely of improvement as we move forward. So I'm sure as we are going for the NDC update to we'll definitely have more um, improvement. And the good thing is like we have uh, countries that have done a lot and many of them have ticked a lot of boxes, which means there's embedded capacity in those uh, countries. Then we can be able then to have some learning experiences, working together to improve the such. Uh, Lamin, maybe for you on the agriculture side, I know you have sort of done some work around uh, sectoral long-term strategies. I know agriculture is very critical in Africa, for sure. So possibly your experiences around, around that. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm glad to take part to this uh, panel as a, a representative of Senegal, which also is uh, uh, elaborating its uh, LTS, mm -hmm. but we use uh, a different way because we are uh, preparing in a parallel manner the LTV and the LTS. So the long-term version is now uh, is also being prepared by another department and working with uh, all sectors uh, to see what will be the vision and uh, the relevant sectors uh, on which we can engage on. Our approach is like uh, the NDC. We are elaborating LTS for main sectors before seeing how we can now structure the main STS LTS for the country. So we are moving through uh, opportunities uh, for with partners for the agriculture sector, we have had partnership with Agnes and um, uh, the SEAT Biodiversity International and SEAT Alliance, uh, which are supporting us uh, through, through uh, two activities. The methodology is we start by a situational analysis of the agriculture sector in a changing climate to see how climate change affects the sector, but also what are the other factors affecting agriculture to see if we have to intervene how we can make the coherence because we can focus on climate change if you don't solve another technical problem or another political problem so we are not going to be efficient so this study has been done uh, by the ministry of agriculture through consultants and we gather the whole afolu sector agriculture forestry livestock and also fishery sector to work together because sometimes we have some cross-cutting elements that have to be captured in the process and in the implementation we have also to know who is going to do what and when we do things differently how we can ensure the synergies to be efficient uh, uh, at the end so this study has been uh, uh, done and separately also we have some uh, we have working with some consultants on physical science who are doing some uh, forecasting to see in the future how the climate is going to affect the sector, agriculture, water, fisheries. And through that one, they propose some options. And now the reports are available, but uh, line ministries asked for more time to look at internally on the uh, options 
and then we can see after how we can come up with some options in line with what they have adopted with uh, their sectoral, sectoral policies. So hopefully after this COP, we'll be having those sectoral uh, meetings to stabilize options and then to structure the LTS on the agriculture sector. So the other sectors are uh, the industry sector, we have also uh, the water sector, but those one we are also looking for some partnership to see how we can elaborate. We have used the same uh, methodology as NDCs and as also NAPS to have in those sectoral LTS and then to see after how we can structure the national LTS. Thanks. Thank you so much. And lastly, for Botswana, I know you are in the process of having your LTV with the Africa Development Bank, and you are in the process. And I'm sure you've also interacted with a lot of these countries uh, for our trainings, and also even the one that we had in in Nairobi. Thank you. Testing, sure testing. You are in the process of yourself interacting yes. Agnes and many other organizations yeah. on the same. Exactly. Possibly your, your experience is on the same. And obviously, moving forward, you will be able to be maybe the country that will be able to tick almost all the boxes because you now have all this experience yeah, with, with, with countries. All right. Yes. So thank, thanks a lot, uh, Mashungu, for facilitating. Thanks to the speakers who spoke before me. Actually, I wish I could say they've said anything, everything I would have said, but my story is not as exciting as theirs, and I wish to commend those who, who are already a step ahead to, you know, to say we are following and we are learning from them. Because uh, where I come from, there's a saying that says things you learn from your neighbors are a lot easier to, to grasp. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Balisi Hopal. I'm from Botswana. I'm the climate change coordinator as well as the national focal point two months now into that level, so you can see I'm failing you. But in the climate change space, I'm more like a veteran. I started at COP15. So what I want to share with you, well, we're here obviously because we are party to the Paris Agreement and the Convention. But in our case, we are not there yet where everybody is because I'll start mainly with the challenges. It's always nice to start with what you have done, like what Dr. Mokoya did, then we talk to challenges. You see, we have not institutionalized climate change back home where I come from. Okay. So we don't have a dedicated directorate or department or even a ministry that talks to climate change. This in itself hampers how to what level you can internalize or domesticate even the convention or the policy itself. But however, we're a country which is, uh, you know, we experience drought episodes from time to time. And we blame it on other things, you know, nature, maybe God not being on our side, but we have to re reason to believe that climate change has now become a factor that we have to act. Yes. So now we also don't even have a dedicated budget line for climate change. So it shows the level of outreach that you can do without those structures. But anyway, thanks to the support that we are getting from our development partners, like, uh, you know, the GF and others who have enabled us to from time to time develop reports to the UNFCCC, such as national communications, we have done our inventories and all that. So this has been informing us. We are also a carbon intense economy. We have lots of coal reserves in the country that can last, I don't know. Lately we are having people from Europe actually coming to buy our coal. It chose to say that our coal is of good quality. They are switching back to coal for survival, of course. And for the same reason that we are doing it, for survival, because we cannot adapt in the dark. We need that energy for our industry. So endowed with so much coal, our energy mix is heavily reliant on coal. But however, since we became a party and participating in these processes, there's been eye-opening to a point that you know, the silo mentality of wanting to do things our way, we now know what sort of things to do. To a point that, like I did mention, back home, our energy is still from coal. Even the Ministry of Finance, we are still not embracing climate change much. So we, we transfer water, 300 kilometers, still using coal to push it. But now there's a, we are finally waking up. We have, as of late, developed a climate change response policy, mm -hmm. which Parliament adopted in 2021. 
And uh, allow me to embarrass my very good friend, Dr. Mukoya. He was very instrumental. And I don't know, he, he doesn't like me saying it, but thanks to him, I'll, I will forever be grateful for that because he did not been for them when we were still at Commerce, I would not be having a policy. Our policy was adopted. We have a strategy as well. And also going to Paris, we submitted an NDC, just quite ambitious, to say with what we could do, mainly from the energy sector, we could reduce up to 15% by 2030 on the 2010 baseline. And our NDC became part of the Paris package. So at least uh, we are moving in the right direction. At least now we are also updating this NDC to obviously as called to do so by the Paris Agreement. And now we are seeing more appetite from the energy ministry introducing renewables. They just floated a few, you know, megawatt, about 150 megawatts, two of them for solar, because we are also situated in the belt where we get so, so much irradiance. So which means there's uh, ministries are becoming, you know, they're talking to each other now. But then also lately, as of last year, we met with the AFDB. We engage in these processes to they're helping us develop an LTS and LTV, which means the project was launched last November. So which means we're very grateful for this development because we see this as going to inform how we move forward and more importantly, inform our next cycle of NDCs because uh, it was also endorsed by Parliament, it was endorsed by this, the project. And we have just recently trained our parliamentarians because we felt, and also once more, still thanks to Agnes, because they supported that initiative in the SADC region and in Botswana. Our parliamentarians are becoming more aware now. So with the LTS, we see it as an opportunity that will ensure that as we develop, as we move forward, we'll be able to do it in a, in a, in a, in a formal way. And obviously, Parliament is now engaging, Energy Ministry is engaging, all our policies are becoming more of, uh, you know, be, to be realized. And even more importantly, now we have thematized our developmental space to a point that we have uh, ministries coming together to discuss the budget and how to plan to go forward. So in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite excited to be here, particularly this COP, because we had a side event at our pavilion where AFDB came to launch this uh, support that they're going to be rolling over to us. And we remain available. We'll keep bothering you from time to time, requesting technical expertise. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for that. I thank my panelists for all this. Yeah, you can take your, your seats. So I know we need five minutes to walk to our uh, next meeting. So I am calling now Mariana from the NDC partnership to give us the wrap up and also the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I know we're in the home stretch and I, I am glad to be here with you, um, listening to the experiences of, of four countries and, and having this conversation, which I think is gonna propel us as, as we move forward coming out of this COP. So once again, my name is Mariana Panuncio Feldman. I am Country Engagement Director for the NDC Partnership, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I want to extend a special thanks to the UNFCCC RCCs from Kampala, Lomé, and Dubai. Um, the Africa Group of Negotiator Expert Support and Climate Analytics for um, conducting the study on LTLEDs in Africa, uh, which is, by the way, among the first of its kind. So what I wanted to share is that, um, you know, the study, I think, provides a, you know, a valuable analysis on the state of play, the challenges and the opportunities related to LTLEDs in the region. And I think that this, together with the guide for LTLEDs, will contribute towards informing and enhancing the development of LT-LEDs in the African region and play a critical role as countries come out of this COP and they seek to um, address the recommendations of the global stock take in, in, um, uh, together with their, with their national context. Now, what I wanted to say is that Clearly, and I think the, the panelists who have spoken before me um, have clearly alluded to this, that the long-term strategies can play a critical role um, in defining the long-term trajectory for a low emission climate resilient development in the countries of the region. They can also play a very important role, as was also alluded to, and I was glad to hear, informing the next round of NDCs that are due in 2025. 
and I think as was mentioned by um, the representative from Nigeria, provide an unmistakable policy signal of the direction that the country wants to take, the transition that the country wants to um, uh, lead in the, in the years ahead. So for all of these reasons, long-term strategies combined with the, of course, um, in close alignment with the, and integrated with the national development plans for the countries, um, you know, they, they are a very, very important um, instrument. Um, and yet, what we have seen, and as indicated by the studies, that many countries have yet to develop them. And there are different reasons, but top among them is capacity and resource constraints to be able to do this effort. Um, and this is why the NDC partnership, um, you know, as a global coalition of developing and developed countries and institutions committed to um, addressing climate action in line with development goals, launched a thematic call to address this very issue last year at COP27. The aim of this thematic call that the partnership launched is to help countries develop robust long-term strategies, develop uh, uh, new NDCs, and generate the alignment between the two, which interestingly enough, the analysis showed is the one thing that we're not yet seeing, um, even for countries that are developing the long-term strategies. And it's interesting that since COP27, we have seen 51 countries already engage in the thematic call. 36 of these countries um, have already articulated specific requests. Um, and 89% of those who have already articulated specific requests have received offers of support from 11 partners, all of whom are listed in the, in the analysis um, presented today. An encouraging um, uh, piece of information out of the engagement we have had so far in the thematic call is that the region that is leading the engagement is the African region. So out of the 51 countries that have engaged in the thematic call, the leading region is the African region, which to me <laughs> means that the gaps addressed in this analysis, we're starting to close the gap. Um, and I think that the guide that has been provided together with the support that we're, we're already seeing, we're starting to provide via the partnership, can really inform the development of more long-term strategies in the months ahead. We have a group of countries that can already tap into the best strategies um, uh, articulated and, I'm sorry, the best practices articulated in the analysis and the resources shared today. So with that, what I wanna say is that I think we're headed in the right direction, but we have more work to do. And with that, I want to invite all of the countries to engage um, with the partners um, that are um, uh, willing and able to provide support and that are all participating in the NDC Partnerships Thematic Call. We are here to address the country's needs. We're here to mobilize the resources to help address those requests. Um, so that together we can actually um, support the countries' in, uh, intent, the countries from the region who intend to move um, in the direction of low emissions, climate resilient development. As we say in the partnership, by acting together, we can achieve more, and with that, we stand ready to support you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we just see?